All right, greetings. Hey, it's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And I wanted to do a little follow-up on um, grazing. And the other day, this particular field, it didn't look like this when I turned my cows out on it, for sure. It was pretty raggedy. And there was a lot of, lot of grass out here. And we turned them out, <clears throat> and in two days, they had it knocked down. Two days. I had estimated four. So I was off a little bit. But that's all right. That's all right. Now, if we look at this field now, you can still see there's quite a bit of green out here. So none of the roots have been disturbed too much. They haven't been ruined anyway. They've been disturbed and the plants have been eaten down to the um, to the field level, but that's all right. That's all right. It just means that they'll have to start over again, which is fine because we've been getting a lot of rain and we've been getting a lot of sun, so these plants won't mind. They won't mind making another go of it. So what I did <clears throat> after they knocked this down and we saw that they were starting to get a little antsy. Once they start getting green grass. They get a little weird, like um, Moon did not want to come up and be milked. She wanted to stay out on grass, and we, we really had to, you know, one person pulling her and one person pushing her to get her up. And then as soon as she got up there, she said, oh, oh, to be milked. That's why you want to do this to me. So within a couple of days now, she's getting the hang of it. I still have to walk down here, here and get her. I mean, grab her by the neck and say, come. But uh, I think in a few days, she'll probably have it figured out that, you know, when I yell for her, it's because it's time to get milked and she's going to get a little bit of a cup full of grain in her feeder up there. So they've been moved out onto this, this field now. This is a part of the hay field. And they've been out here for two days. And I'm watching this closely to make sure that, you know, I don't take too much off. Um, there's a poly wire up. You might be able to see it out there. It's not out very far. Maybe about 50 feet out that way. And there's a single strand of poly wire. And it's electrified, so it's, it's got heat on it. And they're staying away from it, <clears throat> which is good. So then what I'll do is I'll open it up a little bit and let them go down the lane here. Um, I don't want them up on the top field because that's where we cut hay from. <clears throat> but I don't mind them heading down the lane in the trees and cleaning out all that stuff. Now, what's really nice about this is you can see I have some equipment here. There's a, a plow right there. And there's various pieces of equipment laying around, trailer and a boat and a set of drills up there, a planter sitting up there. And here's a broken chicken tractor here that needs to be cleaned up, but I haven't got around to it. It's on my list. But what's nice is when you put the cows in here, they will eat all around this equipment. So it makes it look nice. Otherwise, you'd have to move that equipment and then mow it, and, you know, that takes a lot of work, and we don't have time to do that stuff. So you, you can use this temporary fencing and this technology of grazing, and it's, it gives you a big advantage because, like, all this grass that's in here is really good grass, but... Uh, the chances of me moving everything out of here so I can make two swipes with the swather is pretty slim. I wouldn't do it because it'd take me a half a day to move everything out and then I'd have to move it all back. So I wouldn't do it. But they're in here now for two days. They'll probably be in here all day tomorrow and I'll move them the next day. And the way rotational grazing works is if I don't let them eat this down too low, then I can put them back on here in a week if I had to, but I don't, I won't, I have plenty of space. So I'll start moving them down that way and curve around the edge 
and then we have a big uh, our junk area is over there so they'll go out there and they'll eat around all the junk equipment out there too every successful farm has a junk pile because that's our, our spare parts really is out there so this has worked out really good the other thing that I'm doing and I'm pretty excited about I did this all day today this was my project today that's the field that they were on all winter long they were out there and what I did was every time I drop a bale out there for them I would move the feeder so wherever they stand and eat they usually manure right there so if you had a, uh, an aerial view of this you'd see all these round circles of manure and then in the middle when I move the feeder there's a bunch of loose hay that's left there and I had the field just about covered just about covered with a bunch of a bunch of those manure circles and and hay dots I guess and I went in there today with the rototiller we had gotten a lot of rain over the last couple of days that was quite hard all right and I thought well I'm gonna have to get in here with a shank and break through it but I walked in there this morning and it was really soft from all the rain so I got in there with the tiller and I tilled the whole thing up it took me about an hour to do it but it's nice and flat and smooth the dirt is nice and dark what was that bird and then I got creative and I seeded it and a lot of times when I seed fields I'll just pick you know whatever I'm gonna put in there and I just do it but this time I'm gonna show you this field this is really it it's gorgeous the the fertility here is just gonna be unbelievable isn't that nice now over there in the corner you can see I wasn't able to get in there because it's too wet so I got as close as I could but that was it so all the way around the edges the soil is really really dark and what I did is I planted pumpkins all around the edges down there and what I figure is the pumpkins once they start to vine they'll go downhill they'll go towards the wet ground and the pumpkins that I planted are a 90 day variety so I planned everything here to be about 90 to whatever you know three months or three and a half months that'll put me into September that's fine so what that field will be used for will be um, when the cows come off the field when we're no longer grazing out there I'll have a stockpile of stuff here that they can eat all right so I put in here um, Sudan grass which hasn't worked out that well for me in the past but I'm not gonna quit I put in uh, what is that no I can't remember it's an, it's it's another type of uh, grain crop millet millet and it's supposed to be really tall very stocky and very hardy for cold weather <clears throat> and that's about 35 days I mean 95 days but that'll be when it heads out and it's ready to harvest so we'll see on that and I also put mangles in there and a handful of turnips because I just want to fill it in I just want to fill it in I want it to be completely covered I prefer what comes up there will be the stuff that I plant not uh, the weeds that mother nature wants to bring up because this field is notorious for bringing up some stuff that nobody wants to eat and we just wind up having to go out there and chop it so we're trying to get a fix on that this field that I'm on this is the the rye field that I just grazed off you can see that I've got some areas that I rototilled in here and I'm going to plant this with hemp this is going to be my hemp field so I've never done that and I'm not sure how it's going to work out but I know I won't be getting back on this field until sometime in the fall as well um, my plans for this field are a little different this year uh, we do turkeys and we're going to do about 50 of them this year and 
we have typically done them down at the pond, but we can no longer do that anymore because we're not, we're not letting the dogs down there anymore. So we have to have the turkeys up closer to the house and we're gonna designate this field for that. So we're gonna plant something in where the calves were and that will be turkeys this year. So I'll put a turkey house in there and then when we pull the gate, they'll be able to come in here. So we'll see how the hemp does. Sometimes it does, I mean, when it, when it works, the pictures anyway on the internet make it look pretty good. If that worked for us, that'd be great. Those bushes are sometimes 10, 15 feet high. I've seen them, um, just haven't seen them personally. I'd like to. Um, if that's the case, the turkeys would probably be in here because it'd give them plenty of cover for whatever. And I think that they'll actually eat that hemp too. All right, well, that's what I've been doing. Pretty psyched about that. It's going to be a great summer. Okay, it's Mark Baker's Green Acres. Anyone can find it.